let's be clear. <laughs> Mr. Harrington has gotten our city in an awful mess. And we all know the rule. If you find yourself in a deep hole, stop digging. And because things are really tough, Mr. Harrington is, going, is counting on you to be too afraid to vote for new leadership. He wants you to trust him again and to trust his experience. Well, Mr. Harrington's experience brought us the trash transfer station, the painful capping of the landfill, and now he's hoping to bring more blight to Brockton with his new pet project, the power plant. Mr. Harrington's experience has made Brockton number one in the state in all crimes per capita, and number two in violent crimes. And Mr. Harrington's experience did nothing to ward off the pending deficit, even though it's been predicted for many years. Tonight, we will uncover the difference between experience and leadership. Too often, experience in politics means holding a position and having a job. Leadership always means elevating the position and doing the job. I have a track record of leadership. I am the only candidate to stand up for our neighborhoods and oppose the power plant even before it was politically popular to do so. I am the only candidate to reach out to our top 15 employers, one at a time, to learn how Brockton could do a better job in partnership with these companies to build our economy. I am the only candidate to sit down with our Plymouth County Sheriff, and we've already discussed strategies to make Brockton safer because 65% of the inmates there are from Brockton, and 99% are coming back to our streets. The truth is, Mr. Harrington's experience has, got, has led us to where we are today. November 6th is an opportunity for us to stop digging, to start building, so that our future begins to do justice to our past. I am ready for the job, and I am ready to serve. Thank you. Um, before I start, I want to take a minute. She's probably not going to be happy with me, but I have to introduce my wife, Karen, who's in the audience tonight. Little uh, did we know, we came here 35 years ago with three young children, and I'd be standing up here today as the mayor of the city and, and seeking re-election. I don't know if we would have came here if we knew we were going to do all this, but I thank you so much for standing by me all these years. I thank you. I love you. First, let me start by thanking the sponsors for all this debate. I appreciate the chance to talk directly to the citizens of Brockton. When I was first elected mayor, some of my friends wondered why I wanted the job. Brockton was in trouble. Crime was out of control. Schools were failing. And the city's budget was on the verge of drowning and running. I knew we faced some tough choices. I also knew when I made those choices that it was going to cost me some political points with some people. But my election was never about me. It's always been and will continue to be about the future of Brockton. Brockton is my home. It's where I started my business. It's where my wife Karen and I raised our children. And I care deeply about our community and its future. I know there's a great deal of work left to do. Let me just repeat that again. I know there's a great deal of work left to do, but I'm proud of what we've accomplished so far together. Overall, crime is down. Our school test scores are up. Unemployment is down. Over the past two years, we've had to cut $8 million from the budget to get it balanced. I didn't blame someone else. I worked with the city council and we got the job done. At the same time, we put more police officers on the street every night of the week to help keep our community safe. We built two new, school, two new schools and saved more than $25 million in doing it. We brought in hundreds of thousands and even millions in outside grants. And we formed community partnerships that worked. Being Mayor of Brockton has been an honor and a privilege. And I really want to continue to serve as your mayor so that we can continue to make this a special place for all of our families. Thank you. 